Welcome to our fifth episode in this series. The game we are developing is a small, card-based game designed to fit into the universe of our big box release, Solar175, which is live on Kickstarter right now. So head to our Kickstarter page linked below to explore more and to help us make this project a reality. I've also put some links in the description that will help you to explore more about the game. As for the small card-based game, it will be themed around the Gonza Index, the most valuable stock market in the Solar 175 universe. This episode will take you on our journey to find an artist for this particular game and the tips and tricks we learned along the way. Now the first question to answer when looking for art for a tabletop game is, do you actually need art at all? The finalised art for a tabletop game is generally the responsibility of the publisher, and so if you're aiming to sell your design to a publisher, you will most likely not need finalised art, and so should not therefore invest large sums of money and time into getting it. Publishers tend to see art in game design submissions as placeholders, and may even retheme a game entirely. So it is unlikely that you'll want to pay for an artist if you're going down this route, unless the art of your game is somehow integral to the design. That being said, you should still be intentional about your art and graphic design, even when submitting to a publisher. This will demonstrate the effort you have put into the design and will help make the playtesting they do go as well as possible. Publisher Stonemaier Games suggests this when submitting games to them in review. Games should be thoughtfully graphic designed. It's our responsibility to make the game look great in terms of art and graphic design. However, submitting your game to us without any art or thoughtful design will make the playtesting process very difficult. Please use placeholder art that reflects how you view the world of your game and be intentional with your graphic design for the final prototype. User interface matters. Do not commission final art though, that's our responsibility as a publisher. Now the next question to ask yourself is about the budget you have for your game. There are many options for getting artwork and they will vary vastly in price from free to many thousands of dollars. The first and most obvious option is to create the art yourself. If you have a talent for this, then have a go at creating your own. Or if you are like me and are completely useless on this front, maybe you have an artistic friend who you could collaborate with. Another option which is mostly used for getting placeholder art, but still possible for a designer on a very limited budget, is to utilise public domain and Creative Commons artwork. There is a vast amount of fantastic art which is either so old it's in the public domain, or that the creator has gifted to the universe with a CC0 free to use designation. Sites like Pixabay have literally millions of these images, and they can be incredibly useful. If you can't find exactly what you are looking for here, then sites like Shutterstock and Invato Elements provide the option to purchase the rights to an even wider array of artwork. This can be expensive, but it is nowhere near the price of commissioning unique art of this quality, so it's well worth considering. There are, however, downsides to this approach. Firstly, you're limited to the art that is available on these sites, and therefore you can't create something specific to your game. Also, you won't be the sole owner of this artwork. Others can use or purchase the rights for their own creations. So if you want something completely unique to your game, this approach won't work. The Gonza Index is a deeply thematic game, and so the artwork is crucial. As such, we decided to commission an artist to create the images we would need. When going down this route, there are many things to consider. Your first step is to find an artist, and this can be done in many different ways. As we've already mentioned, you can look locally. Do you have a friend or a family member who could do it? Maybe ask some friends if they know anyone. There are many advantages to having a connection with your artist and being able to meet with them in person. If this isn't possible, then a relatively cheap and simple option is to use freelance websites to find work. The website Fiverr, for example, has many artists and gives a clear idea as to how much they will charge and the sort of artwork they will provide. If you're looking for something that is not too unique and you have a limited budget, Fiverr can be a great option. The platform itself also handles the potential tricky issues of post-commission ownership and payment formalities. So Fiverr stands as a broker between you and the artist, which helps protect both sides, but it does mean that a percentage of your payment will go to Fiverr. 
Another issue with Fiverr is you are limited to the artists currently working on the platform. If you can't find what you need on these freelancer websites, another option is to find an artist who accepts commissions. Platforms like DeviantArt and ArtStation have thousands of artists with all manner of different styles and techniques. Similarly, there are many artists who display their work on social media channels, such as Instagram. Many of them would love the option to work for your commission. Reach out to them and see if they're interested. Now, when reaching out to an artist, firstly, do your best to see if they are interested in taking commissions. Many will have this posted clearly on their profile, so this is a good indication that they will welcome your unsolicited request. In your initial contact, it's important to be extremely clear in the work you are offering. How many images do you need? What is the time frame? What is your budget? Do you have example images of the sort of thing you will need? Make sure to let the artist know why you have approached them specifically. What is it about their art that attracted you? What about it would you like to see replicated in your own images? Artists are humans after all, and they will appreciate the feedback on the positive aspects of their work. Once you've found an artist, it is a very good idea to make clear from the outset what the expectations of both sides are. There are many contract templates you can find online, which can be adjusted to help set these expectations in stone. This initial clarity will help prevent problems occurring later in the process and relationships being soured. I would also suggest you do not offer to pay an artist upfront for work. This is not generally standard practice in situations like these and it can make your chances of being burned much higher. Usually it is best to pay at the end of the process, but it is also not unreasonable for an artist to suggest paying a percentage of the final fee after some initial sketches have been approved. It's also a very good idea to discuss early on with your chosen artist how they like to work. Do they want very clear, detailed examples and instructions for each image, or do they prefer the freedom to interpret your idea in their own way? Make sure you are both clear and happy with the approach you will use. We would also recommend asking for work in progress updates as well. Now, from the artist's perspective, it is much easier to make changes early on in the process, and so giving feedback sooner rather than later is preferable. It's also great to see the process that the artists go through in creating your images. When you do give feedback, make sure to do it in a useful way. Be specific about what you want changed and how. Try not to focus on how the image makes you feel or vague statements like it's a bit dull and instead make sure the artist knows exactly what it is you want changed. Also remember to give more positive feedback than critical. Artists will want to hear they are on the right track. They'll want to know what they are doing well so they can keep doing it and will take the negative feedback much better if it comes with positive too. Once again, don't forget there's a human behind that paintbrush. As a final point, it is generally customary in these business relationships to tip, and so is worth considering. That being said, be aware of the culture of the artists you're working with. In many cultures such as Japan, tipping can actually be seen as insulting. So what did we do? For Gonza, we used the option of reaching out to friends. Our friend was really helpful and suggested a colleague of his, who is a very talented artist, the wonderful Adam Beachy. Our friend showed us some of Adam's work on Instagram and we absolutely loved it. Pretty soon we were playing a prototype of the Gonza Index with him at a Weatherspoons pub in Cardiff. This, by the way, is another reason why local artists are a great option for tabletop designers. Being able to play a physical copy of your game can really give an artist a better idea of how to create thematic and interesting artwork for your game. We were particularly lucky as it turned out, not only was Adam a talented artist, he also had a PhD in physics, which is pretty perfect for a sci-fi game like ours. Adam has worked brilliantly to create artwork within the Solar 175 universe. The art is dark and evocative of the dystopian future we want to create. It really gives players an insight to the vastness of this game world. Adam uses many different artistic techniques for his work, but these particular images are created using a mixture of digital painting and photo bashing, which gives them this strong, realistic aesthetic. Adam is unfortunately not currently open to commissions, but if you like his artwork, we've copied his Instagram account into the description, and we'd highly recommend looking through some of his incredible artwork. Thank you so much for watching. We really hope you enjoyed this video and it was useful. 
If it was, please like and subscribe to show your support. And as always, thank you so, so much to our patrons who help us bring you these regular videos. See you next time. Bye.